Right, ladies and gentlemen, today we are at Dunkeld Stroke Burnham, going up Burnham Hill to try a couple of the reds and a couple of the blacks. Um, I had to work out what way to get up. There's three ways you can get up. There's a Forestry Commission track further to the northwest, and there's a track that I'm on just now that's right next to um, Burnham. But it looks as if you need to cross the A9. But there's an underpass, you follow the A822 for about 100 metres, and then you can go up this, what it looks like somebody's drive, straight up to the drive, turn right, follow the trees, and find yourself on this path. When you try and get up to the summit, or the top of Burnham Hill, have a look, see what the views are like, hit a couple of the reds, and you'll see how we get on from there. So we're still on the way, climbing up. Got through, uh, down by the trees near where the blacks are, turned le left, right, then left again, into a, a deer gate that you might have seen in somebody else. But look at this, you can tell we're on the right climb path because <laughs> there's lots and lots of mountain bike trials. Uh, just tearing up this walker's path, my word. If there was ever an argument for having winter tyres all year round in Scotland, then this is it. Uh, while we're on that, that point, we're just going up to Pink Floyd. <laughs> the tyres I'm running are just now, I'm uh, very glad I've got a, a Vittoria motor, which is a mud tyre, but it can run any Scottish conditions. If you can see it's shedding the mud there between the, it's still gripping through, but I've got a Morsa on the back, which is a, a slightly wider 2.4 tyre on the back. Plenty of protection, uh, but it's a dry kind of tyre on the back, slightly faster. I'm considering getting a, a, a Martello, uh, bigger ones uh, for the back. In fact, I'm considering getting 2.6s on the bike, but for the amount of riding I do, I think this year we'll, we'll run these and then we'll just see how we go on. But I, I was struggling for a tiny bit of grip on that tyre on the back, but it's, um, it's no wonder. But, um, uh, climb's not too hard, it's not, but it does weave in and out, but it's better than going straight up the hill. It will tag back into the top of Pink Floyd, I think. Right folks, we have skipped Pink Floyd because I didn't realise the kind of altitude gain that Burnham Hill has. So I went to do Electric Beaver as well. So we're skipping straight on to uh, Rake and Ruin, is it? The other red one, which is up at the top of Burnham Hill, I believe. That is the top of Raken Ruin up there. There we are. Up there. But what you won't see in these fancy mountain bike POVs is the absolute state of the access path. But I think that mainly mountain bikers have just been made. Um seen Pink Floyd on the upper access path to Raken Ruin. I'll just go down here and show you a bit of it. I mean, look, it's, that's, that's tame. I mean, there is waterlogged bits on the, um, the kind of dry access path, but you get to this field that they've just made this kind of path through. And yeah, you get lots of stuff like that. They've made a, a path out here. And um, well, I may as well just go back and show you it now I've started filming. Yeah, yeah. You get lots of stuff like this. It's basically well, that's half a foot deep, and it's like that all the way along that fence. You can see, so then have you it follows that fence all the way along to that far tree line, and it's like you're swimming. This is why that I run a mud tire all year round in Scotland because most of that was walking, half of it was pedaling through puddles, half of it was walking through bog. There's no way around about it, you just get up the hill, through the bog or whatever. And this is why I don't have special cycling shoes. I buy waterproof hiking shoes from Crescia, 25, 30 quid. I mean, your feet, my feet have been through puddles, are bone dry, and they get far better than cycling shoes. However, onwards. Right folks, made it to the top of Burnham Hill. Uh, looking down at the very steep chute that is uh, Raken Ruin. Um, 
So see that the, the, the walkers path was the access path made by the bikers for the enduro tracks and stuff like that. It's so boggy on this old school track. Um, yeah, I've got some light on my face. Uh, yeah, look at that view. Yeah, uh, really quite steep walk up in places. Uh, all walkable. It's only half of it's rideable, especially when you're getting near the top. No, it's not rideable, it's just a total bog fest, but you just got to plough through it and get up to the top to ride one of these old school uh, downhill tracks. Um, yeah, so let's turn round and see what we've got. There's the bike. What I've done is I've, you know, we tip on climbing, because when you're climbing a long distance, obviously, if it's flat and safe, take your helmet off, take your gloves off, and don't put all your pads on. I've got elbow pads, I've put the kids' elbow pads because I fell off last week. So, and I've strapped them to the bike. Um, obviously, lock out your suspension when it's more efficient to do so. And if you've got knee pads, which I do, and I've got these Alpine Stars on there, uh, slide them off your knees and put them down to your ankles. Helps with pedaling and yeah, look like gaiters as well. Um, yeah, let's have a look at Burnham Hill in the view. It's, look, it's a bit actually higher than I thought it was, so it must be uh, one hell of a descent down. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, uh, yeah, this is good. Yeah, looks flat, pan flat in the camera. Yeah, it's actually a total cliff. Oh well, quite sure we'll get down it. Lovely old trees up here and things like that as well, it's really nice. Oh, brilliant, here's the sun coming out just after I've done the video. I've just done raking ruin, steep in places. A bit like the ruin. Uh, typical what you might say, they've turned into an enduro track um, where you wouldn't go missing a downhill bike or an, certainly an enduro bike 140mm uh, suspension just doable um, two bits I didn't ride because it was cold I haven't ridden for weeks um, the rest of it road uh, but it took me about naturally about 10 minutes and sitting on the bike and riding and trying things out before I was actually kind of flowing into the trail. But once it gets going, you know, that is right, a couple of shoots at the top, um, yeah, but I'm really steep, you need to uh, just send it straight off. And, uh, which, I think there was one step I didn't send off, I thought, no, that's too steep, let's just get off. Um, I hadn't been riding very long. But that's the trouble when you're doing all these, see if you're not riding all the time, um, when you do these, this is a hard track, I mean, it's, it's down as a red. No way in my imagination is this a red. This is, that, most of that is a black. Um, some of it, some towards the bottom is a red, and I, I can see why it was red. I've just found this nice bench. You have a little snack. And if we turn round, we have the mast. Dunkeld mast in the distance. You just see it up there. If it's focusing correctly, but yeah, there they are. Yeah, so I'm gonna just head up to uh, Electric Beaver and see what that's like. Uh, it's supposed to be a black, but it looks easier on the video, so yeah, see how we go. I'm just walking back around uh, up one of the access paths, uh, basically a worker's path, and it joins um, the path that they're on before which goes up there to Pink Floyd and the other red one uh, up towards Burnham Hill uh, I was going to take a picture of this earlier on but I thought I might cross it again I'm calling this the Impossible Bridge because my bike is jammed in the middle I noticed this when I went over last time I couldn't go over it I had to lift the handlebars up uh, but I thought it was quite comical that modern day 
seven eighty wide bars don't get over it. Uh, it's, it's not made for mountain bikers, it's quite simple. Uh, but Doug's trail and electric beavers just around the corner. So we're about to drop in on that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a little description of uh, Electric Beaver and why I think it is the best trail on Burnham Hill uh, by some way, to be honest with you. Uh, Doug's trail starts at the top of the fire road and go around the access road. Doug's trail starts into it and it splits off into Electric Beaver. Um, you can do Doug's trail as well, it's good. Electric Beaver's the one though. Let's have a look why. You've got this kind of dirt at the moment it hasn't been raining for a few days and it is turning from um, just kind of normal loam into this kind of what they call hero dirt status slightly damp tacky the bike's gripped it like glue like when you press into it and it firms up but the bike's gripping let's have a look at the features in it let's go further down First thing you see in our distance is these little bits of stone that's to tell you it's on you're on the main trail basically. Seems to be a thing in mountain biking. And you've gone on a couple of rollers. This one's actually a double. So you can gap that to this berm here. You wouldn't see it up there, but the berms are huge. Lots of support in that berm. Big old berm. Get right round that, reel that on, smash on, the more rollers which are actually a double, so you could double this, jump from here to there, compression up there, jump from that one to that one, smash on down the trail a bit, massive support of burn here, terrific. Quite sure why there's a big random rock slab in the middle of the forest here though. It's a bit odd. Go over to this kind of rock ramp thing, which is a lot bigger than it looks. But go down to it here. And that's the kind of height you actually see it on the bike. You don't really see over it on the bike, believe it or not. But you just roll over it down onto that stuff. Again, cameras don't pick up the detail, but some nice rocks the guys have thrown in, a couple of roots, then the best bit, these two berms that you absolutely smash, you can roll these as fast as you could, uh, yeah, this one, going into that one, and it continues on like this, look at that berm, isn't that terrific? That berm is you can see how hard, see how hard that is, it echoes below, there's roots and things down there, but it's absolutely rock solid. It's so compact, so well made. It's been it's gone got wet, dried out, wet, dried out. So it's basically like solidified it. You know, a bit like a mud house. Then you go on a little gap here, jump that. You end up falling on these roots and probably crashing, but never mind. Little berm here. Smash around that corner. It's difficult to see in the contrast of the phone. Oh, I can see that shape much better in the light. Smash up that. Go down that bit. Over some more roots. Yeah. Smash through this berm. This is like, this is a jump here, a little jump, you can't really see it, if you jump down here you'll see it, see a little jump, jump that, down into that, smashes into that corner, over a, another rooty thing, 
if you if you're not knackered by this point, that's a it's an amazing little jump there. Uh, I'm goosed. <laughs> I'm taking this walk as a as a recovery before we go on it. This looks like a massive ramp. It is. Real size is that size on the phone. To see how actually how big it is. You can roll over it, it's okay though. On GoPros that looks like nothing, it's a joke. But you actually see how <laughs> big how actually big it is if you were to roll over it on a bike. But it's fun though, it's fine. It's good. Smash into another berm. Yeah, and it continues like that for a bit. You know, a couple of berms like that into the trees. And then it just gets a bit winding retailed, uh, you know. A bit like an unleasing track to be honest. But yeah. But it's, it's a it's a relatively short track. Uh, but it's long enough to make you tired and make you work like a pump track. But yeah, favourite track of the day. Just noticed something as well. And just the, the, the little crossroads thing in Electric Beaver. There's Doug's, um, the continuation of Doug's trail down there. Haven't done it, going to do Electric Beaver again. The Electric Beaver comes down there, straight on. But Doug's trail, there's a split further up here. This is actually Doug's trail. I thought it was part of the Electric Beaver. And there's a left and a right. But um, it looks as in trail forks as if you go left for Electric Beaver. But Doug's, this bit of Doug's trail is newer than that. What you actually do is, further on it's split, you go left for Tug's Trail because it then goes straight on at the crossroads and you keep right and follow the, the little mini cairn that I showed you earlier on for Electric Beaver. So I've actually just realised that. Um, yeah, so that makes Tug's Trail flow a bit better. But it's not quite as, as you can see, it is uh, just uh, routine. Loveliness or nastiness, depending on the weather. Today it's lovely. Because you get that nice echoey sound that you might roll over and thump it through them. Anyway. Oh my god, my bike's miles away back up there. Oh, this is all I'm in here myself. Take me, roll down, and back to the car. Here we are in the middle of the electric beam of death. It is a wild, barren, jumpy, rooty, walking piece. We started on the back.